What's going on guys? Caleb here at 86 Speed and today we are outside in Las Vegas, Nevada on this beautiful day. One of our first beautiful days that we've had of the year so far. And today we're going to be giving you guys a more in-depth guide on suspension as well as fitment. Kind of a part two to our previous video that we did last week. So uh, let's get straight to it. So in our last video, it was kind of like a miniature guide to suspension for those of you who may be new to the platform or maybe who have just been out of it for a little while. In today's video, we're gonna go more in depth with the fitment issues that people are having with this car. So in case you're unaware, a lot of people are having issues running the desired spec of fitment that was for the old generation of car. That was a 18 by nine and a half wheel in anywhere from plus 38 to like a plus 44, plus 45 offset. Well, on this platform of car, that wheel doesn't quite work when you're pairing it up with a wider tire or like a 255 or 265 for those who are wanting a meteor setup. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over three options on what you can do to actually achieve this fitment on your car. In our video today, we do have a partner with Titan 7. They're gonna be helping us illustrate this to you. So here on our car, we have a beautiful set of Titan 7 TS5 wheels in machine black. So this is a 18 by eight and a half plus 40 offset wheel. This is gonna be the new ideal fitment for this generation of BRZ. That is, of course, if you're looking for the least amount of modifications required possible in order to run this wheel on your car. So this wheel is not a hyper aggressive offset or width by any means. So you can relatively easily run this on your car with a 245 or 255 tire, depending on what you like to run on your car. We're gonna call this option one. So option one um, with fitting wheels on your car is going to be just running a more modest wheel setup or not lowering your car to a crazy extent. I know it sounds kind of funny. It's very simple of just, oh, of course, just run it this way. But what we mean is if you dial back the aggressive fitment and you run an 18 by eight and a half wheel, it makes it significantly easier to fit your desired wheel on your car. So again, this is an 18 by eight and a half plus 40 offset Titan 7 TS5 in machine black. These will be available on our website, of course, as well as the other models that they carry, the TR10 and in a bunch of different color options. Just a few things to note to give you guys a little bit more detail on the wheel in case you're interested. This is a forged monoblock wheel, so it's incredibly light and very durable. They've also gone ahead and added a knurled barrel to the inside of the wheel just to help with tire slippage if you are tracking your car because they do have a more performance intended design when it comes to their wheels. So of course they're very open, they can fit big brake kits of different sizes and they have those few quality of life things to help make it easier for track guys. So now we're gonna head back to the shop and we're gonna talk about option two and three of how to run those bigger fitment wheels on your car. Alrighty guys, so we're back into the shop to give you guys a better illustration of a wheel that might not be fitting. We've gone ahead and thrown this set of Titan 7 TR10 wheels on our car. This is gonna be their 18 by nine and a half plus 40 offset wheel. Um, this is another excellent choice if you're looking for a little bit of different style. This one's a multi-spoke as opposed to their other like twisted five spoke. This is to show you guys what a more standard fit of wheel would look like. Commonly people like to run an 18 by nine and a half wheel in their car because they either autocross or they track or they just like the meteor look. So as you guys can probably see here, um, this suspension is the same exact as when we had the 18 by eight and a halfs on. The only difference is the wider wheel. So if you take a look inside here, you can see that under compression, this entire portion of the wheel well would come into contact with your tire. Obviously that's bad because eventually you're gonna rub through this, you're gonna create exposed metal, you're gonna cause severe damage to your tire when that fender is constantly bouncing in there and cutting into your tire. To combat this, we're gonna go underneath, we're gonna show you guys how important a lower control arm or an upper control arm will be. So we're gonna go ahead and get the car in the air, we'll throw that control arm and we'll show you guys how to actually adjust the suspension to fit a wheel of the similar size. All right, so we're underneath the car. Obviously, this is gonna be the stock control arm uh, with zero adjustability, and this is gonna be a very high-end SPL lower control arm. So this thing is made out of titanium. It's very lightweight and incredibly durable. Obviously, it's highly adjustable. You can see all these different mounting holes that are milled out to give you that different level of adjustment. It also has a very large amount of camber adjustment, as you can see here on the end. This is where it will replace your factory control arm to allow you to run more camber. So the reason why you need to run more camber is with these wider wheel setups, from what we've seen on the forums and what we have experienced personally, 
a lot of people are having to run more than three degrees of camber. On your aftermarket suspension, just naturally as you lower the car because of the way the car's suspension geometry is, you will achieve somewhere between one and a half to maybe two and a half degrees of camber at most just by lowering the car. But to really achieve the numbers that you're gonna need to tuck a wheel like this for the proper fitment so that you're not causing damage to your tire, you're gonna need a control arm so that you can adjust that camber. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get the stock one off, get this SPL arm on, and show you guys just how much you can adjust the camber with it. So as we're going through the process here, uh, I thought about it, it might be a nice point for a little quick refresher for those who may have not changed the control arm in a while. Just to give you guys a quick reminder, it's just gonna be removing these four bolts here. Uh, one to hold the coil, one that mounts to the knuckle. Obviously you have the rear sway bar in link mounting point, And then you also have the one here that mounts to the subframe. Once we have all those removed, we can just drop the control arm out and get the SPL one in. All right, so we've got the OEM arm off and we're getting the SPL arm on. Of course, there's other lower control arm brands out there. We just went with SPL because that's one that we prefer. You have companies like Cusco is very popular. Voodoo is another popular one. A lot of people go with Megan Racing because they like the blue as well as the product, but they all function about the same in the way that you adjust the camber. So clearly, as you guys can see here, there's these two different assemblies here on the arm itself. These are what actually allow you to adjust camber. Obviously, by increasing the length of the lower control arm, you're pushing out the bottom of the tire giving you more negative camber. Obviously, as you push out the bottom of the tire, it starts to slant, giving you more negative camber. So essentially, that's what we're doing here. We're gonna be spinning this out to achieve our desired level of camber. Once you put it back up, you'll see it pushes everything out. We'll actually lower the car down with the cambered wheel on so you guys can see how those adjustments actually affect the way the suspension looks. So as you can see here, we didn't go too crazy with the adjustment. Obviously with the SPLs, you can throw a, a lot of camber in there. If you are more geared towards stance and you're looking to run a larger number of camber, obviously the better way to do it isn't gonna be just with a lower control arm. You are maybe gonna wanna also throw in like a rear upper control arm. So you can not only push the bottom of the wheel out, but also bring the top of the wheel in, just giving you the extra level of adjustability. And also if you wanna run larger numbers of camber, that'll allow you to do it. But this is more than enough for us to tuck this wheel in here if we wanted to go lower and run a 255 or 18 by nine and a half wheel if we're talking about the actual wheel. The only other thing we wanna mention here is when you are adjusting your suspension and you start to switch out OEM parts, you're gonna run into alignment issues and where you're gonna to need to readjust your toe and maybe possibly your caster, depending on how crazy you go with your adjustments. So we do also recommend if you are gonna be switching out control arms that you go with maybe a aftermarket adjustable toe arm. This allows you to really adjust the toe of your wheel, which if you don't know is how far it's pointed inwards or outwards. So if you think about it like your feet, your feet are flat on the ground. When you toe in, you toe in the front of the wheels so they point towards each other, which is bad, they fight against each other. Or the opposite end of the spectrum is they point outwards. So if you're pointing outwards, obviously the forces are going against each other again. That's a no-no. So you're gonna wanna run some type of adjustable toe arm and link, not toe arm and link. You're gonna wanna run some type of adjustable toe arm. So that way you can really pull that toe back in, get it zeroed out and you'll drive nice and straight. So that pretty much wraps it up for what we'd say is like phase two or option two of running a bigger wheel setup on your next gen VRZ. So option number three is say you're a hardcore track guy or stance guy and you're trying to fit a 265 or maybe a 255 tire that just runs really wide or really big. No matter how much you adjust the camber, if you're obviously tracking, you don't wanna to run too much camber because it's not functional. So if you're still trying to maintain a decent or functional amount of camber and run a wider wheel, you're gonna run into issues. Obviously you're not gonna be able to lower your car as much as you want, or you're just gonna be scraping your tire severely. It's gonna be digging in here really badly and eating away that tire. So this is why we're gonna go into phase three. So I'm gonna show you guys the problematic areas that people are running into with those wider setups and what they're doing to actually fix those issues. So as you guys can see here in the rear of the car, there's this uh, weird like bumper tab. We've seen people in the community and as well as on the, the websites talking about this rear bumper tab as where the issue to where they are rubbing or seeing that there's some rub marks on there. So underneath this tab is actually a very solid piece of metal of where the two body panels are pressed together. Here I have a, another rear tab from the black car that you guys may have seen on Instagram or in our previous videos. And that guy is running an 18 by nine and a half wheel setup as well. And as you can see here on the backside, 
it's rubbing really, really bad. So he's eaten almost all the way through there. He's beveled out this edge and you can just see there's some severe rubbing. Paired with that, if he's rubbing through this, that means he's also coming in contact with that metal tab underneath here. So we're gonna go ahead and get this pried off. I'll show you guys how to do it, it's very simple. And then we'll show you uh, what people are cutting off or modifying in order to fit those larger wheels. Here on the back side of this bumper tab, there's gonna be a two little plastic alignment tabs, I'll say, because they don't really hold the car on there. And then on the top ridge here, this entire part is gonna be covered with 3M tape. That's what holds this on. So what you'll need is just some kind of soft plastic pry tool so you're not causing damage to your paint. And you'll just get it in here underneath and you'll start to pry at that 3M tape. You'll hear it starting to separate as you get in there and pry. And then you can just start to pull. Uh, it may require a little bit of uh, persuasion, to really get it off because again, it is held on by 3M and that can be very tricky to get off of your car. So we'll go ahead and pull this off. And then you can see there, some of the 3M residue stayed as well as these little foam spacers. Those just go on top of the tabs. That's how you remove this section of the rear bumper tab. As you can see here underneath, this is that piece of metal or where the two, the body panels are pressed together, that ridge that people are finding is digging into their wheels. So what people are having to do in order to run those setups or what we've seen on the Facebook pages and the forums is they're actually taking grinders or whatever their cutting element of choice is and cutting away this entire bracket. The reason why is because Obviously those two alignment pins, they don't hold the rear tab on. So they can cut a large portion of this tab out and still return it onto the car because they can just 3M it on there. Obviously this is only gonna be the route that people are gonna wanna go if they're a hardcore track person or like I said before, a stance guy who's trying to run a really large profile tire or maybe you're throwing a super wide three-piece wheel on there with some camber. This is just some of what we've seen of people running extreme setups. Obviously, everybody's setup is gonna be differently depending on what tire you're running, what wheels you're running. So what we are seeing in this, what we'll call phase three or option three for the more intense enthusiasts is they're cutting this bracket off and they're also doing some slight modifications to trimming this fender in here. Um, if you don't wanna go that route, obviously that's why we have option one and two. You can just run the smaller wheel and maybe not lower the car as much. And option two, you can just run that aftermarket suspension to really dial in your fitment the way that you want. But that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for option three and what people are doing to run those more aggressive or just outlandish setups. Alrighty guys, and that just about wraps it up on part two of our wheel fitment and suspension guide. Just to kind of give you guys a summary of what we went over, we went over our first option of what you can do to fit wheels, which is gonna be just buying a smaller, more ideal spec of wheel for your BRZ or 8.6. Your second option is gonna be buying the supporting suspension mods, such as lower control arms, upper rear lower control arms, obviously those toe arms for alignment purposes, and just making sure that you have them adjusted properly to run said wheel that you are trying to fit on your car. And then of course, option three is for the more hardcore enthusiasts or people just trying to run a very specific wheel setup is obviously gonna be removing that rear bumper tab and actually doing some modifications to that element that we showed in the video. So of course, if you guys need any help picking out wheels or just have a few more questions on how to actually fit things on your car, of course, we're always gonna be available to help you guys out. You can send us a DM on Instagram at 86speed or you can message us on Facebook as well. Also, if you have any more specific questions that may be a little bit longer, you can send us an email at help at 86speed.com. Of course, we also wanna hear from you guys. Any more parts you wanna see us test on vehicles or just questions you have, leave a comment down below. And that's just gonna do it for us, guys. We'll see you in the next video.